That plane there, that's a DC-3. And that's both my father and my favorite plane. It's the most beautiful plane. And it's the plane my father first flew commercial on. See, that's the real thing. In fact, I've sat with him in that plane uh, when he used to fly it. That, that's a king air. That, that one. I don't remember this exact one, but generally whenever I was in a plane or a helicopter with my dad, I was put into the cockpit. What he'd do is he'd ask me about all the instruments and, you know, ask me questions. And we'd do the flight check together. So we'd, we'd walk around the plane and then he'd ask me, okay, so what's that and what's that and what's that? And then later in, when I was in college, I, I learned how to fly. I remember we once went to Jaipur, Udaipur, and then we went to Bombay, uh, and then we went to Srinagar as well. This is very exciting because he, these were all normally early morning flights. So sometimes it would just be a surprise, you know, he'd come into my room. I remember once he came into my room at about 3.30 in the morning, he's like, okay, get ready. So I was like, you know, what is this, get ready? So he didn't tell me why or anything like that. So I was like, okay, I had a little aluminium case this big. I packed it with, you know, my shirts and my pants and my shoes. And then I remember walking out in the dark and going. So we were going on a flight. And then I remember I, I sat in the jump seat. Those days, it was pre 9-11. So you could sit in the in the jump seat. And I remember sitting in the jump seat of a, of a big plane for the first time. And, you know, him pointing out different things um, and then starting the engine you know which for us mechanical people uh, is fantastic so I remember I can still remember it uh, and then there was a problem there was some sort of a technical problem it was an Avro and the technical problem so it was delayed so I spent quite a lot of time in the cockpit while my father was trying to fix the problem on the ground and then I remember when we took off uh, wonderful Look, if you're a pilot, that's a risk you take. I mean, you know, you just, that's just something that you take it. So even, I mean, my father told my uncle, because my uncle was flying a very particular type of plane, a pits special, it's a very aggressive plane. Um, my father told him that, you know, don't do this. Uh, my uncle really didn't have the experience my uncle had similar hours to what I have, about 300, 350 hours. And he sh shouldn't have been flying, the, flying that plane. And he flew it. And that's what happens when you don't have the experience uh, and, you, and you fly. It's easy to kill yourself. Yeah, my mother was worried. So every time my father would go on a flight, you know, it would be my mother would have this record playing in the background that he's on a flight, it's so dangerous and she'd be worried and she'd be transferring the word. Then once uh, there was a problem. It was sometime, you know, it, it was on the Kashmir. There was some problem with Kashmir and then there was some, some issue with his aircraft. So my mother, I remember getting very worked up. You know, pilots have a very particular ability that comes from their training. And it is this idea that you have to move from a 30,000 foot vision to details in the cockpit. If you lose track of details in the cockpit, you run into trouble. And if you lose track of the 30,000 foot picture, you run, run into trouble. So the pilot, a pilot, and I am one, we move from these two spaces very seamlessly and very quickly. Pilots also, when they fly, their imagination isn't blocked by roads, by railway lines. Their imagination is at 30,000 feet, so they have this ability to see large systems. And this is what really helped my father. I could see this process taking place where he would go and meet people, get into their details, understand their details and then instantly move to 30, 40, 50,000 feet and look at the big picture. And his work was constantly moving between these two 
perspectives and always understanding that imagination can bridge anything so that to me was a very powerful thing that my father had that's a a3 airbus a320 one of his big regrets was that he left the airline and couldn't fly uh the bigger jets that's a fighter plane so i think both of us would have actually loved to do that didn't really get the opportunity